Right on the zero. Hey, let's size some Triumph rods. These rods are pretty in unusual. They have bolts with this strap, it's a locking strap that you torque it and then bend this over to keep it from getting loose. Look at the parting line, it's not 90 degrees like a typical rod. It's crooked. There's a, a alignment dowel that I took out with my hammer, slide hammer here. So gotta get the rest of them out so that we can cut them on the cap cutter over here. So stay tuned. So I got all these pins out. This one was a booger. The puller wouldn't grab a hold of it. I ended up running a tap down here and then tapping it out from the other side. This won't hurt anything at all. Now so Triumphs, the reason this is crooked is because it won't fit in a cylinder. The cylinder is too small. Here's a cap off of an AMC rod. Look at the difference in the size. If they would have just toned it down just a little bit and made this straight, it'd look normal. Plus, I don't know if I mentioned, this is an oil pressure fed uh, pin. There's also a little hole in the side of the rod on this side and that side. That hole is make sure you get lots of oil in that cylinder so it smokes. <laughs> this is the rod out of a 604 diesel. It's designed like that because it is big. Uh, diesels have a lot more horsepower and torque than this little Triumph's going to have. It's only a 2.1 liter. Now I'm just going to sand these a little bit to remove any burrs. I'll do the cap sand the rods. Put you on a time lapse. Boy, these things are really, really rough. Really rough. And how good that shows up. So let me get you on a time lapse here and we'll get that going. So now that we don't have any burrs, we're going to cut this parting line in this one. And that will make this hole smaller. The diameter will get smaller. So we can hone it back to standard size. So it just goes in this machine here. Rod doesn't usually point at me like that. This just has an indexing wheel down here that raises and lowers the uh, stone. We'll cut a couple foul out of it. And that's what that looks like. And then we'll take it back over here and I'll just I'll hit the corners of it. Break this edge, this sharp edge. We'll peel off the back side of the bearing. Just breaking that edge. It's kind of awkward to work with this rod. Being crooked like it is. And if that shows up. So I'll do them all. Okay, I cleaned everything off. I gotta match the caps back to the rods they came off of. You can't switch them around even though I'm gonna resize them. Um, put oil on these. Anytime you have a rod, bolt, nut, whatever it is, put oil on your fastener. You won't get the proper torque. I'm not gonna resize them with these stupid things on them and I don't even know if he's even gonna put the stupid things back on. I'm not gonna bore you with torquing them, doing all that. I'll see you over at the rod home. Look at how deep that pin goes in there. Look how long this thing is. This is why I had a hard time getting it out. There just wasn't very much for my tool to grab a hold of there. And I got them all torqued. Now I gotta just bump these side faces one more time to make sure they're nice and parallel with each other. Not looking for 100% cleanup. Just making sure there's no burrs. So I'll do the rest of them. There's the crank for this groupy old tractor. I call it a tractor, it's kind of tractor design. Look at, so cranks have oil holes in them, obviously. This one goes all the way through the other side, but look at this. These dumb engineers decided to stick another oil hole in it. I am not a fan of the fan of the designers. Good old British engineering. So this is my rod hone, sunning. Uh, I got a precision gauge, reads in 
gauge, it reads in tens of thousands. I've got a foot pedal down here. When I step on it, that expands this stone out. Now this is a rough stone. I start out with this stone. It's a CR10, and then we go to a 12. It's finer stone. There's also a feed uh, pressure here. I'm gonna start out on one, and then after it gets to cutting good, I'll turn this up to two or so. So let's get to honing. So I got my gauge set up. I cut a lot off of these. Look at that, 7,000. These parting lines were so rough. So I just turned this on, it's got oily. And I'm just gonna hone it. Go kind of slow. Turn the feet up. This indicator you can't see up here kind of tells me what I'm taking off. That's what it looks like. So I'll put you guys on uh, hyperlapse and I'll get these honed up. Now I got them all a thou to go, or close. That one two tenths on this one. So now we take out the rough stone. This has a, a, a shin, a wedge. There's a thin one and a thick one. This one required the thicker one. And I'll just transfer that to this one. And we'll take them to size. Okay, so now we got the smooth stone in there. I didn't talk to you at all about stroking this thing. No, that's not what I'm talking about. You gotta use the whole stone, or else the rod will get taper across the face. Took about three tenths out of there. Another thing you have to be aware of is heat. This thing will get warm, even though it's running in oil. It can get hot and it'll grow. When you're working with tens of thousands, that little bit matters. So I'll put you guys back on hyperlapse. Finish these up. See how we did. Right on the zero. Right on the zero. This gauge is so accurate, it'll it'll grab a little bit of stuff and you see it move, but if you wiggle it around, it stays on the zero. That's how delicate that gauge is. Very, very accurate. Zero. Just like we like. There you go. Nice and round. Ready for the new bearings. I'm not doing bushings. The bushings in these are tight. Typically the pin-fed uh, oiling rods, engines, they don't wear the bushing out. Uh, I guess that'll do it for this one. Thanks for coming along. Appreciate you guys. Hey, I am over 6,000 subscribers now, thanks to you guys. So you guys have a, have a good night. Whenever you're watching this, good day. And always be nice to each other, all right? We'll see you next time.